This is the splicer mask from Bioshock. Welcome back guys. So here I have the parts from the splicer mask. Now, if you're not familiar what a splicer is, if you've ever played the game uh, Bioshock, you will know what a splicer is. They're bad guys in the game down in Rapture. It's a fun game, one of my favorites. And I've always wanted to print one of these masks, but I just never have. I don't know why. I just was kind of always afraid to. So it prints out in these technically four pieces, uh, it's three print parts, and it can fit on a, a pretty small bed. I'd have, I mean, it can fit on a 200 by 200 bed with this alone. You probably could print the entire thing on one of the larger printers, but I decided to just do this again to be safe being like, I mean, I've printed a few of the um, Mortal Kombat masks, but they're very, very small. I mean, they're smaller than just this part here, uh, which I am super excited with how this turned out. Now, I ended up using a filament called USA Fill. It's now almost $30 a roll, but when I originally bought it, I bought it to review over probably a year ago, but I just never got around to it because I had so many other filaments that were sent to me by companies. And again, when companies send me filament, I end up reviewing those first before I do things that I buy. So I used it and being year old filament still in the packaging, printed like a dream, not a single problem. This was printed on a TiVo Tornado. And I have to say, a lot of people don't give that bed mat credit because I'm gonna show you here what it was like to pull that off. I have the, the build height, what I think the, the first layer height, perfect. I'm able to grab this with a little bit of force, pop it right off. But during printing, it's not going anywhere. It holds super duper tightly and I'm very impressed by that. And now when it comes to the support on this, the whole bottom here had support on it. There was a little bit here behind the eyes which literally just fell right off. There was a little bit here on the back of where the ears start to come up, the very top of the head, which also basically just fell right off and there was nothing on the two ear parts. Now, in order to even connect these, also very nice about the model, it has these um, registration points, that's it. They call the registration points, it has the three of them, so that you can line the model up perfectly with the next piece, and it's done. That makes it very nice and easy. So, what we need to do now, is I do wanna try and finish this. Maybe not like perfectly, but as much as I can. You guys saw it in the, the intro here to the video, on what it actually ended up looking like. I don't know how it's gonna look right now because I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm hoping it's gonna be somewhat decent. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove this support. We're gonna go ahead and sand our flat surfaces, so not the surface, well I'll sand a little bit between the registration points, but we definitely wanna rough it up a little bit. That way the glue will take hold much better and give us a much better bond. Once we have all that done, we're gonna go ahead and bondo and sand where these joints come together. So there's gonna be the three joints end up doing. So the right here across the forehead and the two up on the ears. We'll try and sand those down a little bit, put a little bit of bondo in there, which I have right here. I have this glazing and spot putty, which should work. I am not the expert anywhere, so I'm not gonna do like a how-to. I'm just gonna tell you my process. So it's the sand this a little bit, we're gonna put some bondo it, try and hide that a little bit, we're gonna sand it again. If we need to bondo some more, we'll bondo some more. I'll try to step it down. You know, I'll start with like, uh, you know, I'll go 200, 300, 400, 600 grit on the, the sandpaper, see how that ends up working out. The back, I'm not worrying about at all. It's all about the front, because that's all you're gonna see. And I'm just really hoping to get rid of the lines there. If you can see the print lines to me, I think it's very appealing to know that something was 3D printed. I think it's very cool. I don't, I don't need it to look like it's an injection molded part or that it's a, it's a uh, what's that, uh, vacuum formed part. I don't need that because I do 3D printing. I like showing off my 3D printed works. I just want to get rid of these gigantic layer lines. So I'm going to do that and then we're going to go ahead and hit it with some self etching primer, sand it again lightly. Then we're going to try and do a cream uh, to coat the entire thing. I'm going to go to the store tomorrow and see what I can find at the store. Tomorrow, Sunday, I'll pick it out. This is going to be like about four or five day process here. And then paint it all cream with spray paint. And then I do have some rub and buff. So I'm going to go ahead and use rub and buff on all of the features that you see here. And that's gonna add a gold 
uh, just a nice gold look to it on that. And then I might add some more in here, just kind of rough it up a little bit to see how it looks. Never done it before, so it's worth experimenting on on my first mask. So let's get to removing the support, which should be pretty easy. It's really just this bottom part here. And there's one part of it. And there's the last bit of it right there. That, that actually does came out pretty good. I definitely will, will have to sand that down. It's a little bit rough down there, which kind of happens over support. It's gonna be a little bit rough. It's obviously not gonna be like a top layer or anything like that, or a bottom layer where it's straight on your build surface. But it's pretty good, and the eyes here are also very nice. I'll just sand those down a little bit just to get rid of a little bit of the roughness there, and we'll call that a day. So, let's, um, I don't even have any sandpaper around here. So I'm gonna go ahead off, and I'll try at least give you some pictures, some short videos during the process of this. Again, it's not a how-to, just my process on how I end up getting to my end result, which I don't know what it's gonna be like yet, but we will see very soon, so I'm off. All right, so here's the current status of the mask. Uh, it's kind of yellow, which I'm pretty upset about. I bought a like cream colored spray paint and it was supposed to be also a little more matte, but it's super duper shiny as you can see. And it didn't, what I you know did, did not turn out well. I'm <laughs> just not very good at those sanding and, and bondo. I should have bonded the entire thing, but I don't have that much. So what I'm gonna do now is I have here some uh, rub and buff. Then I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot. Where are we at? There we go, rub and buff. So this is antique gold. I think it'll look okay unless I'm gonna do a little bit and see how it looks. And I'm gonna do all the raised parts. So we're gonna do that, see how it looks. I also have uh, this, I'm like a metallics, and then I also have a silver rub and buff that I might also try. So I'm gonna do this first, see how it looks and go from there and just kind of see, because I mean, this obviously is not a great project, but it's something for me to learn. And here's the results. Why don't you think about that, guys? I like it, actually. It definitely did not come out as good as I intended. Uh, I was not liberal enough with the uh, Bondo. I should have put a lot more on and sanded a lot more. I kind of wanted to, I did rush through this a little bit, uh, yet the the mask has been sitting here like a week since I first started and I had not finished it. So what I ended up using is, where did I put it? Here it is. Um, the Antique Gold Rub and Buff is what I ended up using. So after I fully painted this, I just took the Rub and Buff on my finger and just went through on all the perimeter of this. And then I went ahead and did all the features and I was like, you know what? I've got so much on my fingers, blah. And I did the same thing here in the back just to kind of make it look a little bit rougher. But I have to say, I think it came out excellent for my first ever finished prop. Uh, people did say they did add a little bit of elastic. I do have some uh, strapping around here somewhere and I do have little clips so I could technically just clip it on. But uh, yeah, I really, really like this. They, there is another version out there that has like, um, it's like the damaged slicer, splicer mask. And like half it's like torn away, kind of like make that part like bloody or something like that. Um, I also do, I think I'm gonna try this one more time. I don't know if I'll do a video on it or not, but it's actually plenty, like it's actually not too big to print as one piece, which you really could. I don't know why I did it in three pieces, but I definitely could do this as one and then could have avoided all the lines. Now, um, I am out of this like yellowish, um, creamish looking paint, but I do have regular white. So maybe I'll print it again, paint it white, use the rub and buff again, or maybe use silver rub and buff. I do have silver as well, um, and see how that turns out. But honestly, I'm very happy with this, and uh, I I'm sorry that I didn't get a more detail on how to do this because I am nowhere near the authority on this. Go watch Punch Props. Or, or someone like that, uh, they are the authority on finishing props and 3D printed things. Or, or go watch Uncle Jesse. Uh, he has done some amazing things as well. And he, they are the authority on how to do things like this. So, oh, so a little bit about the uh, filament. This actually was a year old roll of filament that I bought. It was called USA Fill. And I don't know where I put it at now, but I bought it for under $10, like $9 and I originally bought it. It's now 30 on Amazon. And I bought it because I was buying filaments before, uh, cheap filaments, I wanted to test them out, see how they came out. This literally came out perfect. But else, it was in the box, in the sealed packaging still, and absolutely 
printed beautifully on the TiVo Tornado, had no problems with that. You saw me pulling that off the bed. Uh, it, it just, it turned out great and I was really excited for that. So that ended up being a pretty cool filament. Is it worth 30 bucks though? I can't really tell, but for this, it worked great. This is just my adventure, my first adventure into finishing a 3D printed prop, and I really did enjoy it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions on what I actually did, leave me a comment down below. I'll gladly talk to you guys down in the comments, but uh, like I said, it just wasn't something that I will go into detail as an authority on a video, in a video. Yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a big thumbs up. I really hope you did, because I did. And if you also did, again, leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys on what you thought about this project. If you guys want to stay tuned what's going on, look for more awesome projects like this, hit that subscribe button down there and hit the bell icon that we get the email notification when I upload new content. If you want to support me, help me pay for doing projects like this, become a patron. Down below is my Patreon link. You can donate me a dollar more, get you access to Patreon feed and my after show, which I do after almost all my uh, videos. So when I finish this, I'll talk to my patrons, give them a little bit more details, things like that. Talk about my personal life if you're curious and things like that. Other ways donate, there's one-time donations down below or there's a bunch of foot links with coupon codes. Go down there, check that out. I appreciate anything you guys do. It all helps the channel. So thanks for watching. Till next time, happy printing.